In 1947, a 20-something created the first lesbian magazine in the US, calling it vice versa. It had a simple layout and was mostly the creation of one author. Despite its small circulation, Vice Versa proved to be influential on later gay magazines, and its publisher, Edith Ide, would be known later under her pseudonym as a pioneer of gay media. As a side note, I was initially unsure whether to use her pseudonym or her given name, as she was publicity shy throughout her life. Despite this hesitation, I think it's worth giving Edith Ide her due using her real name. After all, Ide is named in more recent histories, uh, and her name is attached to the collection of materials on Vice Versa at the One Archive in LA. Edith I grew up in Northern California. Fun fact, we went to the same high school, though several decades apart, and moved to LA after World War II. For more on how significant that is, uh, check out episode 5 on homophile organizations. She cautiously entered the burgeoning gay scene in LA around that time and wanted to meet more people. Working as a secretary at RKO Pictures, her boss told her to look busy when she had downtime. So she decided to write a magazine for her friends, with content specifically for the lesbian community. Typing up multiple copies at a time, two sets with one original and several carbon copies, she would hand them out to people she met with a request to pass the magazine along when they were finished. Ide went on to work for the Daughters of Belitis magazine, The Ladder, under the pseudonym Lisa Ben, which is an anagram of lesbian. She was well known in some LA lesbian circles. As a singer of parodic folk songs, she even recorded a couple of these that The Ladder distributed on 45s. Despite her reach in LA, she remained obscure until fairly recently much like a lot of pre-Stonewall activists and notables. Reading Vice Versa, it all seems strangely familiar. In its nine issues, there are book and movie reviews, poems, short stories, and letters to the editor. To my mind, Vice Versa is somewhere between a formal magazine and a blog. It's at once anonymous and highly idiosyncratic, and so obviously a labor of love. And I'm not just saying this because Edith I had, had to type each copy from beginning to end without any mistakes. Half the time it reads like a particularly enthusiastic Tumblr, which is very charming, and I think it makes it feel current if not contemporary. I wanted to focus on Vice Versa because I think even small actions can have an outsized impact. Though Vice Versa at nine issues lasted less than a year and had a small circulation, possibly in the hundreds, it went on to be recognized as a pivotal artifact in gay history. All of this because Edith I wanted to meet girls. <laughs> In other words, don't sell yourself short because you can't see the impact of your actions now. Just give it another 70 years or so. As always, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow the show on Tumblr, and don't forget to subscribe. I've put as many resources as I can in the description below, and there's a link to the transcript there as well. See you next time.